Good evening and welcome to 15 Minutes with Longevity. I'm Giselle Wertheim Ames and I'll be your host this evening. I hope you'll join us here for your weekly dose of health advice. So tonight we are talking about dermatology and everything we need to know about keeping our skin healthy. Joining me in the studio today as my expert panel are Dr. Rakesh Nuwaj, a dermatologist who specializes in the diagnosis and management of general dermatology, mole screening, surgery for skin cancer, skin pigmentation and hair diseases. Also joining us today is Dr. Marion Duvenage, also a dermatologist who has joined us from Pretoria. Okay, Dr. Nuwaj, I'm going to ask the first question of you. So what are the most common skin problems you see in your practice every day? In my practice, the most common skin problems I see are eczema, acne, pigmentation problems, skin infections like molluscum, warts, and also nowadays we're seeing more and more skin cancers. Uh, it's getting more and more common in our South African population. And that's obviously got something to do with the climate, it must be, um, Dr. Duvenage. The mm -hmm. climate that we live in, or awareness, what, what would you put it down to? It's definitely a lot to do with the uh, very lovely climate that we have here. That's exactly the reason why we live here. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a lovely sunny climate, so people spend time outdoors. Um, so a lot of the skin cancer, unfortunately, is sun-induced. Um, the most serious one, though, the melanoma, is the controversial at the moment, though because about 80% of patients who get melanoma get that on sun-protected areas, and only 20% of those lesions are then on sun-exposed areas. So can you explain that? What does that mean then, that the sun protection is not working? It may be that it's the, that we actually have a much, more, uh, much stronger genetic background for melanoma development, and that the external environment may not be such a critical thing when it comes to melanoma in particular. So it could be genetics or it could be dietary related or lifestyle related? Most probably genetic. Yeah. Yes, I've had cases of mm. melanoma, two-year-old baby mm. with mm. melanoma, mm. where they haven't been much exposed in the sun. And most of the cases, like Dr. Marian has said, mm. most of them occur in sun-protected areas, mm. in young adults. Mm. And, and that's Which true. is very alarming. Mm. Yes. How would someone know if they have a problem? I mean, is it, is it because of a mole that looks a little bit out of shape? Is it the way that you feel? Do you feel ill? What would be the common symptoms of having a melanoma somewhere on your skin? And, and the, well, we have a very easy rule to remember it by. It's called the ABCD rule of melanoma. A for asymmetry, B for the border, which is irregular, C for the color, which is, means it's dark, a D for the diameter, normally bigger than about five or six millimeters, and then there's another one E coming in as well for evolvement. So in other words, any uh, mole that you see that has been changing over the, over the last while. If, if you're saying that there are factors, even genetic factors that we now have to consider, then what kind of preventative measures can people take, Dr. Nuage, to prevent, get, you know, prevent oneself from getting skin cancer? It's very difficult, again, to say that. But what they can do is, if somebody has a family history, one of the close family, first degree family has had melanoma before, mm -hmm. they must have a yearly checkup. Okay. If they have many moles on the body, of course that also predisposes them to getting melanoma. Mm -hmm. And thirdly, if they've had previous melanoma or even other cancers mm -hmm. in the body, they must have regular checkup because it makes them more predisposed to getting melanoma. Yeah. So do regular checks on your, on your body. Mm -hmm. Be aware of your, your body. Yes. Just as we do with breast cancer, we should do the same with our skin. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Just um, on the subject of, we were talking about sun care and protection. I mean, there's been a lot of debate with the Cancer Society bringing out that report of products that were, were acceptable, we weren't, weren't acceptable in terms of UVA and UVB. Can you shed a bit of light on what type of protection a person, minimum protection, mm -hmm. a consumer should use um, in terms of sun care for themselves or for their children? Mm -hmm. The critical thing is, is really just not to get burnt, because that seems to be where we get the most damage. Uh, the sunscreens were always just developed with ultraviolet B blockers, um, and for many years that was regarded as standard care. And only in the last while that we really realized that people also need UVA blockers, and the UVA goes much deeper into the skin, and it's actually the, the rays that then cause the skin cancer, the carcinomas. So if you now buy a sunscreen, you must make sure that it also contains a UVA blocker, although that actually is now pretty standard um, to have UVA blockers and not only UVB. 
The problem with the, with the sunscreen is though, that the UVB blockers are now blocking all the UVB rays, so the people are not getting vitamin, vitamin D, D. Yeah. Mm -hmm. which is a, another big topic for a discussion on its own, actually. Yeah. In SPF 15, will block around 93% mm -hmm. of the rays, and, and SPF 30 will block around 97% of the rays. And again, the problem also happens is people don't apply them properly. If you apply, what, what happens is in the lab, the test they do on an SPF 15 and they, when, they, when they wear it outside, it's much less protection than they get because they put it much more thinner layer and they don't renew it. And that's what causes problem. Mm -hmm. And we tend to advocate a higher SPF because of people not putting it the proper way. And, and as Dr. Marianne said, a UVA blocker is very important as well. I want to put a spanner in the works though, that we seem to, the, inc the incidence of skin cancer is going up worldwide. Yes. And we are now continually saying, do more of the same, putting more sunscreen on, more hats, more protection, stay out the sun. But it seems that we're going backwards. And I don't have the answer yet. I just think we need to think whether we are actually doing the correct thing. Yes, and probably just keep ourselves as well informed mm. as we can. Mm. Just on other issues around the skin, you were talking about eczema. Um, eczema, again, just uh, you say it's a very prevalent condition in South Africans. What, what, get, what causes eczema and, and how is that treated? Okay, eczema, there's a lot of genetics that come in. And basically it's one of the protein on the skin that doesn't function properly. So the skin gets drier mm. and loses the water. and the more drier it gets, the more irritated it gets. And of course, the person starts scratching and then it becomes a cycle and they get eczema. It's very common in Gauteng. That's what we see because our weather is extremely dry. And uh, nowadays, we are, we're having to use stronger and stronger cortisone and keep them on much longer treatment because people, they start feeling better and they stop the treatment or they don't follow up. There's a lot of, uh, in South Africa, we have a lot of problem people not following up with their treatment or follow it the right way. How do we achieve better skin health? Because it can't just be about topical treatment, surely. It, it surely has to also come from within. I think that, well, then that brings us really to just general good health. Because if, you're, uh, if you eat healthily, of course, then you will be generally more healthy anyway. And that will also reflect on your skin. I have a question for you. Now, as we age, <laughs> our skin starts to develop all sorts of funny friends, you know, little tags on them and discoloration. Mm. Why does that happen? Well, one of my patients just friendly called it the bark of the old oak tree, but maybe one can do something about it. Um, we do treat it. Um, uh, we normally use liquid nitrogen that we just freeze the new s superficial spots. The little skin tags we literally snip off. Um, in, in our population where um, a large body mass index is a big issue, many of the, of the individuals when they lose weight, the, the skin tags also will drop off. And if somebody comes to see us in our practice for, with skin tags, we will normally do a, a blood sugar test on them as well because it's associated with insulin resistance. Really? Yeah. That's interesting. We have different population groups in the country um, and th I think one of the biggest myths is that darker skinned people do not burn. Mm. Dr. Newash, you can, I'm sure, dispel that. <laughs> Darker skin people burn, but it's less visible. Mm. Of course, we, we do have a skin scale. There's a type six skin scale, which usually doesn't burn, uh, but in abnormal circumstances, if they are in the sun for hours, they will become darker, but we won't see it. Yes, they do also get skin cancers, uh, and we do see it often. Uh, in uh, public hospitals, we do see them more there. And, uh, and that happens. I've seen that there's quite a big trend at the moment to anti-aging treatments, lasers, mm -hmm. Botox, fillers. I mean, obviously for a, a specific set of the population, mm -hmm. this is not a widespread phenomenon. I mean, are these treatments uh, safe and, and, and do they make a big difference to people's skin? Mm -hmm. Anti-aging treatments and, and cosmetic treatments really make a big difference to that individual person. And it gives me as a, as a practitioner as much joy to you know, fix someone's drooping mouth or uh, f f uh, frown as it is to rid the person of a chronic itch. Uh, so it, yes, there's a lot of place for it and people are actually uh, flocking to us to have this treatment done. Right. Dr. Newage, I'm going to leave with you. What if you had to give two tips, good tips on advice, if we're going to round up and end with you to South Africans to look after their skin, what would it be? 
good habits like uh, smoking, drinking, alcohol and stress. Try to limit this and sleep well. Mm -hmm. well that's one. Second, sun protection. Dr. Duvenage, Dr. Nuage, thank you very much for joining us here this evening. It was very interesting. I hope many of our viewers will take the very good advice that you have given with regard to your skin. So thank you for joining us. Before we go, let's take a quick look at this skin insert. Studies show that a majority of sun damage and other environmental factors can affect the skin at early ages, which requires one to protect the skin as early as the infant stage. From birth, actually. <laughs> because uh, the different stages in life, like uh, children below the age of six months, you mustn't expose them to the sun at all. Then you have to start using sun protection from an early age when children are still in school. But in terms of what uh, women are concerned about nowadays, that is the aging of the skin, I would say, we generally say, you know, for the age of 30, you must use anti-aging products and so on. But uh, I attended one conference in the U.S. In the, uh, not so many years ago where there was a cosmeceutical guru, that's the guru of cosmetics and anti-aging stuff, who said if he had a daughter, he would start at the age of 18. But I would say we start as, as soon as we can uh, start washing, it's important to wash, cleanse your skin, moisturize and use sun protection. Well, that's it for this evening's program. I hope you'll join me next week again when we'll be discussing hypertension and why we need to take this health issue seriously. In the meantime, have a great week. Take care and stay healthy.